Hey gang, Shane Patrick White here and welcome to Beyond the Process. Do you fear using color? Has color mixing become a huge issue for you? Maybe it's because you were taught to use the wrong colors. Today I'll break down why that is and how to overcome your fear of color to put you on the road to successful color mixing. If you're interested in becoming a better painter, whether it's digital or traditional, you'll want to see this. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the process. At its most basic, color is the perception of light that is interpreted by the rods and cones in our eyes. Traditionally, colors for artists started out as ground pigments made from the natural world. For instance, ultramarine blue here is ground from lapis lazuli, a rock from the Middle East that was said to have been at one time more expensive than gold. When combined with a vehicle to disperse pigment, you get paint. As printing presses became commonplace, primary colors became some of the most used inks. These colors were very basic, consisting of reflex blue, red, and yellow. They were never mixed directly, but used in conjunction with each other. Yet, as children, these are the very first colors our fertile imaginations are introduced to. And for decades, they have been the wrong colors for budding young artists. For this initial demonstration, I'll be using Paintstorm. Traditional color theory is more subjective, while modern color theory, known as color science, is objective. They would include additive mixing, subtractive mixing, and average mixing. Today we'll focus on average mixing as it pertains to paints and granularized pigments like pastels. The first thing many artists are exposed to is the color wheel, which contain primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. When children start painting at home or in school, they usually use tempera paints, which are a milk-based paint that is non-toxic. In most cases, none of these colors mix well, like not at all. Children are not typically going to mix colors outside of finger painting. That's why there are usually a wider range of colors for them to use. Yet, when people decide to take up art as adults, they run into problems with color mixing. As an example, let's look at how these colors work together to mix a range of secondary colors, and yet why they never work. Well, that's not entirely true. You can see here that I successfully can mix a decent purple and an orange, but when it comes to mixing a green, the wheels come off the bus, creating a very muddy color. And it doesn't matter what program you're using either. Even Photoshop, which is used a lot by concept artists, but is not a paint program, still gives you a terribly ugly color. Why is that? The problem here is that it's the wrong kind of blue. It's too cool. To lavender. Colors that are highly mixable can offer people less headache and more joy when painting. So how can we reconfigure the primary color choices so that we can optimize the mixes? Even though it's not entirely program dependent, I switch over to Rebel 7 to show you how to set up a more balanced palette for successful color mixing. You can see here that I'm using primary colors, but my blue is pushing more towards a cerulean blue. Blue that is not too warm and not too cool. I'll cover color temperature at a later date. Now, when I mix my secondary colors, I have a greater range to work with. See how the green is now a lush spring green? Even my purple still looks pretty good. I even want to show you how you can push the colors to lean more toward certain primaries while keeping the middle secondary colors in place. For instance, red shade oranges and yellow leaning greens offer an even greater range of pure color to build a palette from. As a way to show you what I mean, let's build out a palette that one might pick from when doing a traditional painting. We'll cover the basic definitions of hue, saturation, and value using tints and shades. Hue is what you would call color. As you can see here, we have a full range of primary and secondary hues to choose from. The saturation, or what is sometimes referred to as chroma, is consistent throughout. Chroma, or saturation, is the strength and purity of a color. Now let's cover value, or what is referred to as luminance. This is the brightness and darkness of a color. Values are made up of tints and shades using white and black respectively. I'll use blue to create a drawdown of color and mix it with white. 
I'll then go about trying to show you the range of tints in 10 to 20% increments. Notice how the color purity still holds and doesn't diminish. Next, I'll create the shades now using black. Again, I'll use 10 to 20% increments to show you the range you can get while still maintaining strong color. Now, let's take a look at saturation. Using red this time and picking colors from the Rebels color wheel, you can see how I descend not only in saturation as I move to the left, but also in value as I move down. When I put the colors against white, you can now see more clearly how they relate to each other. Now, let's take a look at saturation when it comes to tints as we move from right to left. Our darkest value will have the most saturation, while our lightest value will have the least. As an introduction to color and painting, I think this is a good place to start. Grab the color swatches that produce the best results and practice your color mixing. This will be the basic foundation for the next videos I have planned on painting and color theory. I hope you enjoyed this video, and remember, despite how frustrating this can be, try and have fun. Thanks again for joining me today. If you found any value in this, hit the like button. Better yet, subscribe or tell a friend. Until next time, thanks for watching.